Have you just downloaded Blender for the first time without the slightest idea of what anything here means, or how to just navigate around this cube? Don't worry, in this series I'll guide you through this complex software and by the end you'll come out with a shiny new mug and newfound knowledge. To start, I'll break down what you see from top to bottom with brief explanations. First, you'll see this top bar marked with layout, modeling, sculpting, and more. If you click on these labels, you'll see the interface change. They represent different parts of Blender like animation or texturing. To the left, you'll see your standard file edit win window menu. You've probably seen these before. Below that, you can see what's called the header. The header is the area for most of Blender's operations. Looking closely, you can see that it's divided into three main parts. The left part, here, is for manipulating your objects. If you click on object mode, you'll see a few other modes. We won't touch any except for edit mode. The middle part is for helping with moving things in your scene, but we won't be using it today. The right part is for changing the display of your scene, whether it be realistic lighting or hiding things like the floor grid. Finally, we have arrived at what is called the 3D viewport. This is where maybe 90% of your work is done. It's where your 3D model is actually seen and changed by you. Over here, you'll see these colorful icons. This is the section called Properties, and this section is used for changing properties, hence the name, of your object. Above this area, over here, you'll see your Outliner, which is where you can view every object in your scene. By default, you get a cube, a camera, and a light. A camera is what renders your scene. Rendering is the word for the computer generating your final image or animation. The cube is pretty self-explanatory, and then there's the light. In your final render, the light will simulate light, of course, on all your objects. Finally, we've reached the last thing, and that is the timeline. In making the mug, we won't use it, but it is normally used for animation. With that out of the way, let's get started. While there's still a lot to learn, your first project in Blender is a great way to learn your way around. First, we're going to delete the cube, which can be done by pressing X and hitting Enter to delete. And also down here, you can see what keys I press if you ever get confused, and you can also see what mouse wheels I click, what mouse buttons. So in any project, the way to start is with Blender's list of primitive shapes. And to add one of the primitive shapes, I'm going to hit Shift A, as you can see at the corner as well. And I'm going to select Cylinder, because that fits the shape of a mug the best. Before clicking away, before clicking anywhere else, select the Add Cylinder thing at the bottom left, and here you'll see a bunch of options that can be used to customize the primitive shape a little bit. For example, the object can be made smoother on the edges with the vertices slider, shortened with the depth slider, and lengthened, and then made wider, I guess, with the radius slider. For the mug, I would recommend setting the vertice count to 64. 32 is fine if your computer is a little bit slower than the most, and then most. And next I'll change the height and width to match what a regular cup would look like. Most coffee cups aren't 2 meters tall and 2 meters long. Let's do 9 centimeters for the height, and to do centimeters all you have to do, instead of typing like 0 0.09 meters or whatever, just type 9 space cm. And that will convert it to centimeters automatically. And for the width, let's do maybe 4.5 cm to centimeters. Next let's turn the cylinder into the body of a mug. To do this, do one of two things. Hit the tab key or click object mode at the top left and select edit mode. To do that, hitting edit mode there, or what you can do is just hover over anywhere in the viewport and hit tab and that will automatically switch you to object in edit mode. And I'm going to also zoom in so I can see it a little better. Take a quick pause, I should say that in Blender, objects have faces, edges, and vertices, almost like 2D shapes, but just 3D because they can go forward and back. To convert primitive shapes into more complex objects, we alter these three elements. Begin by clicking on the top face to select it, and when you started, you were actually in vertex mode, um, which is the corners, and you cannot select the top face because you're not in the top face isn't a vertice. So what I'm going to do is go to the top left up here and select this because this is vertice mode, this is edge mode, and this here is face mode. And then I'm going to select the top face, and if you do that correctly, there should be a white outline and it should turn this dull orange color. Next, I'm going to hit I to create a smaller face on top of that face, which can be done by clicking I, like I said, and sliding your cursor a little bit, just like maybe there, 
to create the rim of the mug. Now I'm going to hit E to perform what's called an extrusion. Extruding an object is when you, in extruding a part of your object is when you extend it in a certain direction. Get a nice view from your cup of, from above and bring that face down by hitting E until you see it disappear behind the bottom of the cup. So I'm going to hit E, drag it down, and once you see it disappear up right about there, you're just going to drag it up a little bit and left click to confirm your edit. And now you have your concave in the body of the cup. But maybe you clicked too early and it's still down here. And in that case, just hit Control Z or Command Z if you're on Mac to undo and repeat the process. There we go. Once you've done this step, you'll have what looks like the main shape of a mug. And all that's left to do is the handle. To start, look over here at the colorful X, Y, and Z. Clicking on one of these letters brings your view to the side, top, or bottom of your scene. It also gets rid of perspective, so objects far away will look like they're up close. These buttons are called the viewport gizmos, which we're going to use for our handle. Click the X or Y. It doesn't matter which, since they both view a side of the cup. So I'm going to go ahead and hit X for mine. And still in edit mode, select the box with a line wrapping around it on the left over here. And this is a tool called loop cut. If I click on it and hover over the cup, you can see this yellow line appear. And I'll leave side view so you can see that a little better. This yellow line is going to, if you left click, create a cut right there. And that makes a ring of edges going around your cylinder or your cup. But I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to hit Control Z. And go back into side view. And I'm going to, instead of just clicking, click and drag to move it up. And I'm going to put it about here. Then I'm going to release my finger to confirm. And I'll repeat the process three more times. There, maybe. And down there. And right about there. Now I'll use my mouse wheel to get out of the side view. And then I'll select these two faces. So you're still in loop cut mode also. So you can't select faces because left clicking will just cut another loop. What you have to do to fix that is go up here to this select box thing. Click that. And now you're good to go. I'm going to select face mode up here, then I'm going to hit this face, I'm going to hold shift to multi-select and hit that face, and then be also be sure that one of the lines, green or red, it doesn't matter, is coming out from the middle and from where the middle of the, the shapes are, because that way we're going to be able to see it correctly in side view. Next I'm going to hit E to extrude them and drag them to about here, then I'll click left click to confirm. And then I'm going to go up here again to the gizmos and click X this time because that way you can see the side of the shapes. Because if I clicked Y, then you would only be able to see the front right there. So I'm going to click X and then I'll hit the R key to rotate my selection. R stands for rotate so it's easier to remember. And I'm going to do that and then you can see that where you move your cursor rotates the thing. But instead of moving your cursor, you just want to let go of your mouse, hit R and then type 30. And what that does is it rotates your selection by 30 degrees. And then I'll repeat after extruding it again. And now you can sort of see how the handle is going to be made. I'll hit R, type 30, left click to confirm. Then I'm going to hit E again, maybe about that far. Left click to confirm, R30, left click, E, R30. Left click, E, R30, left click, E, R30, and we are done. But it looks like I did make a little mistake here because you can see that if the top of the handle came out of these two, in these two loops, I'll go into edge mode, to select them. If it came out of these two loops, then that means this one is going to go into these two loops. But you can see that it is a little bit below. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to hold the Alt key or Option if you're on Apple. I'm going to click in the middle of one of these lines on the edge like that. And what that does is it selects the full loop. And to go back into side view, I'll just hit the X. Then I'm going to do Alt, Shift to multi-select. And I'm going to select this loop. And now what I'm going to do is hit the G key which is for grab or move, and that moves your selection around. And also, if you ever have a, 
um, kind of edit you're doing and you don't like how it looks and you just want to undo it but not having to left click and hit control C you can just right click and that reverts it to where it was but I'm gonna hit G then I'm going to hit the Z key which moves it up and down along the Z axis and in most things Y is up and down but in Blender Z is up and down then I'm going to left click to put it right about parallel with the top of your handle and now with that settled you can see that I basically have my mug I just need to connect the handle what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in by scrolling up just over here I'm going to go up here and hit the little vertex mode thing and then I'm going to hit this vertice just by left clicking it holding shift and clicking this vertice hitting M and what this is going to do is it's going to merge them and that's what we want to do because we're going to merge the handle to the cup and I'm going to hit at last and what this does is it merges your vertex to the last vertex you have selected and in Blender it's handy because the last vertex you select is always white and I know I want to merge the handle to the cup so I'm going to hit M again click at last for that part and then for this last one I'm going to hit this one shift select M at last and now almost and we're almost done we just have this part of the cup to go so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to hit this vertice and this vertice M at last you may have to move a little bit to see it. M at last. And finally, M at last. And I'm going to hit tab to go back into object mode. And our cup is looking pretty good now. It's almost done, but there's still one issue. I'm going to go up here to this little right area of your header. And you can see this little icon with two boxes overlapping each other. And when I click that, you'll see that it goes into this X-ray mode where I can see through my object. And now <clears throat> you can sort of see it here. You can see how over here there are lines that go like this. And over here there are no orange lines, which means that this is going into the object. So what I'll do, I'll hit tab to go into edit mode. And now you see this jumble of lines because you can see every vertice on the object. I'm going to select face in face mode and now you can see that there are these little dots that each represent a face so if I click this dot I'll have selected that face and if I shift click this dot I'll have selected that face but I'm not going to do anything with those faces what I'm going to do is if you can sort of see inside the object there are these two faces and normally when you're modeling you don't want any faces to be inside the object so I'm just going to hit X left click on faces to delete those and our issue is solved. So I'm going to hit tab to go back to object mode. I'm going to hit the x-ray option to go out of x-ray mode. And your mug is 90% done. But most mugs don't have this blocky appearance to them. Most handles aren't tubular. And you normally can't see the individual faces on a real life mug. So now I'm going to use this properties area on the right. And I'm going to go to this wrench. And I'm going to add a modifier. Now what a modifier is, is almost a change you make to your object that's not actually there and the best way to learn how that and how that works is just by adding one so I'm gonna hit up here add modifier I'm gonna go under generate down to subdivision surface I'm gonna left click that and now what you can see is that my object is smoothed out it's not quite super smooth and the way you make it smoother is by over here where it says levels of viewport you can change that to numbers like 2 or even 3 and now to see how the modifier actually applies the change you can just click the object tab to go into edit mode and you see how your faces are all still here it's just that the modifier makes it look like there's it like it makes it look like it's smoother when it's actually not but there are a few more issues we still have. You can see that inside the mug there's this weird triangular thing happening and outside of the mug the top is very very sharp and in most mugs it does not become that sharp. So the way we're going to fix that is like this. The subdivision modifier which is what we added makes changes like this. If you have a rectangle section on your cup up here and we can say that that's maybe like um, right 
there on our object. The way it makes this change is by rounding the corners out as far as they can round. So this goes to this. But we want there to be edges like this, slightly rounded, but not too rounded like that. And the way we do that is by making our shape look like not this, but this with a little extra section up here. And then what that does is it changes that into this. It rounds the edges slightly, and then it rounds not all the way like that, but like that. So I'm going to go ahead and erase all this. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is go back into edit mode, go back to the loop cut, and left click, drag up until I reach the top. And you can see how it's already coming into effect. The edges are rounding less and less as I get near to the top. And I'll maybe put it about there to round out those edges. But we still have this issue on the top of the inside part. So I'm just going to do the same thing. You should see it like down here maybe. I'm going to left click, drag up. Oh, it's getting a little laggy. And left click to release. So sometimes if it does lag like that, I'm going to go into edit mode. You can just go to your modifiers thing here and hit this little monitor icon. And what that does is it hides your modifier so you can't see it. But when I do show the modifier, this just toggles it. When I show it, you can also see this thing I talked about earlier inside the cut. And the way we fix that is by going back into edit mode. I'll hide the mo and that's the wrong button. I'll hide the modifier for now. I'll select loop cut and I'll bring this down to the bottom. And here we're just doing the same thing as we did up here just at the bottom to make that less rounded. But you can see that we still have this sort of triangular appearance. So what I'm going to do is select this face by going into face mode. I'm going to hit the I key. And I'm going to inset it like we did in the very beginning, just a tiny bit. And what I've created is these three edges that are very close to each other to minimize rounding. So finally, I'm going to go out of object mode. I'm going to hit the monitor icon or real time to display that as we can see it. And you'll see that our mug is finished. Now the only thing left to do would be make it actually look like a mug, give it shininess, give it like roughness, make it on a table. And that will be in part two of this series, but we'll cover texturing and materials. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in part two.